welcome to the Disney Nerds Podcast. Good morning. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about what I call the Forrest Gump effect. I'll also talk about the dangers of the cinnamon challenge, how crowdsourcing was used to identify the Boston Marathon bombers, and finally, yesterday was Earth Day. How did you celebrate? Some of the process story and the new scientist would ask the question, how does being very intelligent hinder you? I called the Forrest Gump effect to watch the movie and wonder how are all these amazing things happening to Forrest Gump. An amazing running back. He was a ping pong champion, a war hero. He got to meet the president a bunch of times. He started a shrimping boat company and did amazing investments. Eventually landed the girl of his dreams. What's his secret? According to this study, being stupid. One thing you shouldn't do is always second guess people that make stupid suggestions. I mean, who makes suggestions? I gotta work on that one. It's hard to just sit there and watch the fail unfold. Stupidity is efficiency. Someone tells you to do it, you don't second guess it, you just do it. Boom, just jump right in. I always have to overthink stuff. Maybe that's why it takes so darn long to crank out these vlogs. I'm trying to do it almost every day. I like look at what I've written, I'm like, let's say indigenous project worthy. One suggestion people have is to ask dumb questions that puts people off their guard and they're more likely to let you in on their information without the fear of you judging them. I hate dumb questions, but I'll give it a try. So do you guys like watching YouTube videos? Post your comments below if you like watching YouTube videos. Like say yes or just, you know, say no. If you want to say why, you can. You don't have to. Speaking of stupid, this new report that the cinnamon challenge, which someone takes a spoonful of cinnamon and tries to consume it, one of those things that kids challenge each other to do. And then some of them will videotape it and post it on YouTube because they're so desperate for attention to post silly videos on YouTube. Please like me. You could blame Tosh Pano, who I believe made this popular last year. On the other hand, they do have a disclaimer that lets you know that only professional stupid people should be trying stuff like this. There are currently over 50,000 clips of people doing the cinnamon challenge on YouTube. No wonder our economy is finally turning around. We're spending our time so industriously. So yeah, your video is probably not going to go viral unless you're, you're really a hot woman and you decide to film it naked. Last year, about 30 people were hospitalized after doing the cinnamon challenge. That's my new self-defense spray in the morning. Is he fending off a mugger or are those delicious donuts? If you're an asthmatic, you probably don't want to do the cinnamon challenge unless you really want to scare the crap out of your friends when you collapse on the ground. It looks like they caught the two bombers of the Boston Marathon with the help of crowdsourcing. That's right, crowdsourcing is not quite dead. There's this new piece of software out there that was able to take all the pictures and videos that were sent in by everybody and using metadata encapsulated in the photos, they're able to pinpoint the location and direction of each single photo, thereby making a nice framework of what exactly happened. And then from there, they're able to piece together who did it and what happened. Now, of course, there were amateur cyber sleuths out there that misidentified people based on some clips they had seen. So we had people that were completely innocent being accused of these horrible crimes, and this was even put on major news networks. Nicely done out there, major news networks. Lazy. I thought I was lazy. That's lazy. Hey, major news network, just do the cinnamon challenge if you need that much attention. The program is called Crowd Optic, and you cannot run the law when they got hardcore nerd technology by their side. It reminds me of the movie Enemy of the State, but in this case, Big Brother is the good guy, and the Will Smith characters are the bad guys. How come Will Smith never plays a bad guy? He's always playing the good guy. I think that's why his career's gotten a little stale. He needs to play a good Batman villain, or an Iron Man villain, or... And maybe not act so over the top. Just tone it down a little bit. He's had some great movies, right? Enemy of the State, that was an excellent movie. Men in Black wasn't too bad for its time. A lady likes Independence Day over there. She just chimed in. I'm not as high in that movie, so, but we're gonna let that slide. Hancock had a lot of promise. The first half of the movie is pretty good, and then it turns into crap. Baby's mom also chimed in. What about the movie where he was homeless? Yes, that was, that was a story of triumph and overcoming. But it was Will Smith, so it was hard to believe. It seems like this software was written specifically for this purpose. I'm trying to come up with other uses for software where you would crowdsource a whole bunch of photos and, and video. I guess if you had a time machine, you could use it to go back and solve the JFK assassination. You could use it from a bunch of photos taken on a red carpet at a big movie premiere and figure out who the celebrity was that just walked by. But they're celebrities, so you should know. You just Google them. If you have any great suggestions for this software, you should let me know, because I can't figure anything out. And finally, how did you spend your Earth Day yesterday? I spent it as a Native American. For me, every day is Earth Day by definition. I know a lot of you may have forgotten. Here's my recommendation for next year to make up for it. Get together, volunteer with a group of your friends, and go clean up a Superfund site. And don't forget your hazmat suit.
Or you could just go and argue with someone about global warming. It might not accomplish as much, but it'll raise awareness. That's what I believe in, raising awareness by being really annoying. One of the problems our planet potentially faces is overconsumption. The Earth's human population has been exploding, so don't procreate. Abstinence Earth Day. Celebrate platonically. That wraps up this episode of the Indigenous Project. Have a good morning, everyone. <laughs>